Step into the spotlight of Sands Showbiz, guiding you through the stories behind the stars with Nigel Clarkson. Ian Fort, who appeared on ITV's Stars in Their Eyes. Right on the show today, Ian Fort, well-known radio DJ, but not only radio, he's been big on the TV as well. And it started many years ago. Welcome along to this podcast. Thank you very much, Nigel. Would you say it first started for you when you went all the way back to Stars in Their Eyes? Was that the start of for being on TV? It was not too long after, to be honest. A very few, maybe two or three years after. Yeah. The Stars in Their Eyes, we actually recorded in 1993, and it wasn't out on the TV till the summer of 94. So we had to sit on that for quite a long time. Were you sworn to secrecy acts or anything like that? Were you not oh, allowed yeah, to tell definitely. anybody about anything? Yeah, yeah. They said, you mustn't speak to the press. We bought, we'll, we'll do a press package that we'll send to your local paper and to the regional papers. And uh, you don't speak to anyone. Don't tell anyone how you did or where you came. Because you either win or you don't, really. But yeah. um, no, nope, we weren't. We were forbidden. You tell the anybody. family about it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you tell the family, but then they tell everybody in Blackpool about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, my mum was very hard to impress when I said to her, hey, we've got on stars in their eyes. We're definitely going to be filming. She said, do you want beans with your chips or peas? She wasn't, she wasn't really... Uh, so you better explain, right, with... to, to some people listening to the podcast right now or watching us on YouTube, um, you better explain what it was all about, stars in their eyes, because some people won't know what the programme was about. Gosh, no, because it's 30 years ago. You, it was a chance to impersonate your favourite singer. Um, but they, when they did it in the beginning, they did it properly. You spent six months watching videos of your favourite singer. And yeah. you had to go to choreography lessons to learn how to move like your favourite singer. And if they played instruments, you had to learn the basic chords to impersonate the playing so that it looked right, really, as well. And, and you spent a long time on the vocals, and there are thousands of people auditioned. And if you didn't get on, you didn't get on. You had to be good. You had to be a good mimic, a good impersonator. <laughs> <laughs> Trumpet oh, moment. So the programme was, you went on as an act, didn't you? And you had to go in front of the judges. Was it in front of the judges, or was it actually judged by the public? No, the, 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 the audience were the judges. Oh. Um, <laughs> so you went on as yourself, then you went backstage... Then they make up people, then changed you to look like you you were impersonating. Yeah. So you looked more. You came back through the doors with a load of dry ice and did your thing. And then the audience had buzzers in the, that voting buttons uh, at Granada TV, and they I don't know whether they, those buttons were connected to anything really, or whether yeah. it was a bit like Opportunity Knocks all those years ago. Pressing the for the dear life of it, and nothing happening. <laughs> <laughs> It's the clapometer, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Not off. Um, so you came, you came on as, what did you come on as? I was Phil Everly and my brother was Don Everly. We did the Everly Brothers. So you came on tonight, Matthew. We're going to be the Everly Brothers. We're going to be. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Well, actually, I didn't watch Stars in the Rise much. So when that time came and Matthew Kelly said, who are you going to be for us tonight? And, and I said, you know who we're going to be. We've been rehearsing it for the last two hours. <laughs> you know, I couldn't understand why he was asking that. And everybody laughed and said, no, you've got to say, tonight, Matthew, we're yeah. going to be. <laughs> Excellent. And then they put the smoke on, didn't they, as you went through the door. Yeah, and you came yeah, back. Da, 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 da. And then edit it as you come back through the doors, yeah. Were you really nervous? Yeah, yeah, I was. Because they tell you, you we only had two goes at it. He said that they'd had loads of acts that come on, but they're so nervous that they've vomited on stage. Oh, or, great. Um, they, they've been in such a tiz that they've forgotten the words. And they said, we don't have all day to, <laughs> to keep rehearsing this. You've had six months to learn it. So you get two goes at it. And if you don't get it, you're replaced. And we've already filmed your replacement. And here they are. And they showed us. And it was this guy singing uh, The Lion Sleeps Tonight. I'm told the urge to sing that is only ever a whim away. Sorry, yeah, I couldn't resist that one. <laughs> but, but that was that was going to replace us, which would have been dreadful. So uh, yeah, we had to get it right first time, second time tops. But we did it. We did it right first time. So did you get two chances on it? Did you do it twice? Uh, we did. We did. Uh, in fact, when you watch it, you can see that I'm sighing and my brother's trying to catch his breath and lick his lips. I think we were we were nervous, but we did it right. <laughs> I mean, it, went, it, it made a career for you, that programme, didn't it, in the future, Ian? Because you went touring, didn't you, all over the place, you and your brother? 
We did. We did. I remember my brother saying to me, you know what? If we get six months' work out of this, it'd be great. And we did it for nearly 25 years. Wow. Um, unbelievably, yeah. We did Spain and Holland uh, and, and lots of places in Europe and all the big places in Britain as well. We did the St. David's Millennium Centre in Wales. We did the O2 in London, not just on our own. There were two or three other acts doing 60s stuff as well that an agent had put together. And yeah. the SECC in Glasgow, all the big venues, Nigel, wow. which is quite exciting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's it like to go on at the O2 then? Was, I bet that was nerve-wracking. Massive. The dressing room we got had been... Uh, Madonna had had it the week before. And it was just huge. It had three showers, two fridges full of alcohol, which <laughs> is always always good for the nerves. Bit of Dutch courage. Uh, and I'm just, it was it was just enormous. It was like three or four living rooms. More space than you needed to get ready, really. Yeah, and there was only two of them. Yeah, and did you get a costume a and everything in? Was the costume made for the show? Yeah, yes, it was. They took us to London, and they we, we went to see this tailor, and he had a table, a huge wooden table, filled with photographs of the Everly Brothers. And we spent half an hour discussing the kind of uh, suits that he thought would look best on TV. Wow. It, they really took it seriously in those days. Then they took us shopping in Carnaby Street and bought us some Winkle Thicker boots to go with the suits Fantastic. and then put us on a train back home. <laughs> and you know, when you go down to the studios and everything, right? Just, to, uh, I mean, nobody will know behind the scenes we're talking now. Do they put you up in a hotel? They do. Yeah. And it's all paid for and everything, is it? And you get your meals. It is. And it is. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they look after you. And you got a check then as well for 250 pounds each for appearing. A check. Which what is, is this good. thing? A check. A check. Yes. It was a strange piece of paper that promised to pay the bearer. A yes. bit like a note, but... <laughs> yeah, so you didn't Checks, get the payment for four days. That's what I remember from checks. You never got the money in your bank. It never cleared for four days. Oh, did heavens. It? Sometimes nine days. It used to take <laughs> ages, didn't it? I suppose you, you liked the stardom bit, didn't you, then, after being touring around as the Everly Brothers? Well, it is nice. I mean, when we did Amsterdam, that was to, to nearly 5,000 people. And I had a star on my dressing room door and flowers and champagne in my dressing room, and a queue of people wanting my autograph, Nigel. It made me feel very special for a man yeah. who's very shy and very humble yeah. and uh, terrified of, of actually doing it. Once I'd done it, I, I loved I loved all the fuss afterwards, yeah. That so that good. would give you um, like an inclination to go on the TV a little bit more when it all ended after 25 years, which is a long, long time anyway, isn't it? It um, is. And you think, wow, well, I like, because I know you enjoy being on the TV as an extra. I do. I love it. I love it. I started doing that maybe 25, 27 years ago. It wasn't too long after we did Stars in Their Eyes. And mainly because um, the, a girl who lived in a room next to me in the nurse's home in Manchester, she used to do it. And her boyfriend drove her there because you always start early in the morning. It's always don't, half don't six. Don't tell me o'clock. he used to do it as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, possibly. Uh, but, but they split up and she said, can you take me to see the agent? I'll have to explain why I can't do it anymore. Because he used to drive her to these early gigs and she didn't drive. So I said, all right, then. And while I was there, the agent said, do you want to do it? And I thought, not half. Absolutely, I do. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's how I got started. Yeah, so some interesting shows that you'll have been on as an extra. What's one of your favourites? One of your favourites? Um, I've only ever had one line in the 25 or so years, and that was Hollyoaks. After um, I was a policeman, and there, were, there was a body, that's all I can remember, really, and an abandoned car, and I had the line, is this your vehicle, sir? And I tried to sound like the policeman that had stopped me for speeding on the M61 a few weeks before. I was playing <laughs> loads of TV themes like Indiana Jones and James Bond and 633 Squadron. I couldn't turn the thing off fast enough when he came to my window and he said, good evening, Squadron Leader. Run out of runway, have we, sir? <laughs> he must have heard damn busters. I couldn't do all the buttons fast enough. So, so that was the voice I channeled for that. It's your vehicle, sir. And uh, yeah, yeah, that was that was good. Still not got onto Doctor Who. That's something I'd really like to do. I've met directors. I've met other people who've been on it. I've done shows where there's been scenes with Daleks, but not my scenes, yeah. sadly. And there'll be a big queue for people to try and get onto Doctor Who, I would imagine. I would think so. But 
when I spoke to the producer some years ago, he said, anyone who tells me they're a Doctor Who fan, we, we don't pick them because <laughs> most times they're, they're trying to nick stuff off the set all the time. They're trying to get their hands on a script or a, a piece of TARDIS or a, whatever. Yeah. It's so a bit difficult said, getting ever... a Dalek in the back of the car, though, isn't it? You know, when you're going up. <laughs> Not in my Skoda, no chance. <laughs> Maybe a roof rack it, strap it to the top. <laughs> so you've been in some recent TV shows as well, haven't you? One that's been yeah. the flood. After the flood, yeah, I was in. I was in that as a, a tired daddy. They gave me two children that I had to be uh, trying to get some food off them in a community hall or some food for them. No, I'm not licking it off them. And uh, and then they made me a flood warden a bit later on. But I don't know if any of that made it to the screen. I saw um, you queuing up actually. You, when I saw the bit that in the canteen, I saw oh, you there, yes. and you were queuing up, and you were getting. It looked like a sausage balm cake or something. That's you right. Yeah. Very happy. <laughs> 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 We'd just done this scene where we were we were carried into the school on the back of a tractor uh, underneath a rain machine, <laughs> and it was really windy as well. And we must have done half a dozen takes of that, going backwards and forwards, being soaked and windswept and uh, I was glad to be indoors uh, yeah. by the that's why they stuck a hat on me I think <laughs> and did you play different parts as well in the you know in that series was uh did you play other people or was it just one person I think, I think toward no I was I was I think I was the dad for the first two episodes and then later on they had me as a flood warden in a blue uh high vis but I I I haven't watched it to be Have fair so I don't know if I'm seen I keep I meaning to, but I've yeah. not got around to it. I never understand that. A lot of people say, oh, yeah, I was, I'm in blah, 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 blah. But I haven't watched it. <laughs> I think, well, I, I'll tell you what, Nigel, I used to do for the first 15 years or so. But I was I was embarrassed at saying to people, hey, I've just filmed this. I'm man with a horse. I'm man with a pipe. I'm, you know, whatever. And, and then we'd watch it or I'd say to my mum, I'm in this. And then it would all be cut. And, I, and you didn't see me, and I knew yeah. where I was, and it wasn't in it, and then you, you just feel a bit silly then. Yeah, the nearest so, I got um, to uh, any TV was on EastEnders, and I was at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. And do you remember the radio station in the middle there, Kit Kat Radio? Kit Kat Radio, you did that, didn't you? I, I remember. did that for a couple of seasons, and we are opposite the gold mine there, and um, this guy oh, came brilliant. in and said, hello, I'm from the BBC, and we'd like to use your voice. Can you Can you say this, that... Uh, it was a couple of the actors, and it was like a, a dedication or something. They said, "Oh yeah, yeah, oh, I can do that." So they recorded brilliant. it all, signed the contract, and you will be getting—I can't remember—I was going to get paid for it. I think it was about hundred yeah. pound or something. And uh, that's the contract, but you only get paid if we use it. Yeah. <laughs> so all right, well, we yeah. I never watched EastEnders, and I watched it. They didn't use it. They were at the pleasure Did beach, but they never used it. Oh, Nigel, oh, could have done with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good news is, if you're an extra, you you still get paid whether you're used or not. So yeah, that, that's always a good sign. So anybody listening to the podcast, right? Because there's going to be people who have like to get into being an extra. How on earth do you go about being an extra on a TV show? Oh, there, there. If it's a quiz show or something like that, I believe you contact the makers directly uh, and say you're interested, and they have uh, reams and reams of names that they decide to get back to or try as and when they make the shows. If it's TV shows in general, most people are with an agent or an agency. Yeah. It, it's not like the old days where you had to have an equity card and you had to um, have an agent who represented you solely. It must be, these are just agencies that are set up and provide extras, uh, background people. And yeah. there are lots of them. Linton Management's one that I'm with, but there is PHA is one, I think, Boss is one industry is one um there, there are loads of them there are loads of them so what do you have to do with the agency do you have to pay them a fee or how's it work that do they take a fee if you get a gig yeah they they uh, they, they usually charge you about 15 pounds for a, to get their photographer to take the photograph that they want to use on the stuff they submit to the people on the telly um yeah. and then after that they take 12 percent, 15 percent yeah um from whatever fee you get for for doing it so they're driven to get you on the tv because they want more sales so they need to get everybody on the tv as, as quick Absolutely. as possible yes, <laughs> yes and things like adverts if you can get those they generally pay really well 
I did one for Daz with Danny Baker in Manchester. Um, I think that was about three hundred pounds for that for the day, which wow. wasn't a day. It was about three hours. And uh, and the best one, the best gig I've ever had acting wise. I didn't get a word in. I had to clean a car for Red Row Housing, and they they, they the camera panned back to show. A young couple with a house, me sad with a cat, uh, cleaning the car in the house next to them, and then a, an elderly couple in the house next to that. And that took us about five hours to film uh, on an estate in Chester. And yeah, when I got a check for that, it was £685. Wow. And then I got another check for 200 and something because they'd shown it online and in cinemas. So it's my, my only royalty payment as well. And was the car clean? Oh, I, 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 ten times over. But no paint <laughs> left on it. I love your eyes. How's it going? <laughs> it was silvery grey by the time I'd, I'd scraped it all off, yeah. I mean, because you've been on the radio for quite a long time. You did Sam's Radio for three years. I did and really enjoyed it. Yeah, so you'll be looking for some like DJ parts or radio presenters on the TV, I suppose. Well, yeah. I mean, the thing is, the agency say, what skills have you got? Can you right. play golf? Can you ride a horse? Can you, what what things can we put you forward for? And I keep telling them, yeah, I, I did a stint as, as a radio presenter and I'm a singer. They did get me a background job once doing karaoke <laughs> for something, a daytime thing for the BBC called Moving On. But I, I don't, I, I keep saying, write these things down. And well, yeah, I'd love It'd be great to play a radio presenter for the telly. You know, when you go for an extra job, say you're on Coronation Street or something like that, do they have catering where you get some free meals? What do you get free? What do you get free? (laughs) I've done loads of curries. You don't get anything free on curry. Do you know? They uh, they used to have a burger van uh, that did sausage butties or burgers in the beginning, but now they have a canteen. It's a big hub. And if you want food, you have to go and pay for it or take your own. Wow. What yeah. about a pint of beer? Uh, no, because all the extras were getting drunk. There's the thing. They used to use real <laughs> alcohol, and uh, the extras were drinking it, and they were being topped up and drinking some more. And the next thing, you, you had a lot, <laughs> a lot really? of drunken background people. I always so thought, it's... right, in, in the Rovers, that they used uh, they didn't use real beer. I always thought it was like a gravy, <laughs> gravy white uh, water mix that they had to drink and they said it tasted disgusting they just sipped at it oh they they used to use beer but yes after the the extras were uh drinking it on purpose really so they had to keep getting topped up they replaced it with alcohol free beer um, oh. you remember caliber when it first came out yeah that was really absolutely awful it doesn't taste great no i always um, think you know when the actors are eating <clears throat> they always yeah. look like they're eating marbles have you noticed that on the tv as if it's absolutely foul what they're made to eat, and they're like, oh, yeah, 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 and then, they're, but they're not. It's bad acting. They go, Ooh. you can tell it's like stone cold or something, because very often it's it's been out for three days or something while they've been filming, oh. or or they've put it out and then they've broke for lunch and it's been under the studio lights and it's dried up and congealed a bit. Or I bit a hot dog once and someone said, don't don't swallow that. It's been there two days. <laughs> Oh, good. So what's the plans for the future then? Are you trying to get, have you ever tried to get in a, a film? Yeah. Occasionally I get put forward. I did um, A Monster Calls with Liam Neeson. I never got to see Liam Neeson. And in fact, I was I was man on a train filming at midnight in Ramsbottom. But when I watched it, they'd cut that scene uh... Uh, of me shambling along the train. But, but films would be good. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to do all these things. Would you travel far? You know, would you go to it? If you got a call from America, would you go there? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. It would have to be, if you got a few days or a few weeks on a film, that would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Yeah, and pay for the flights and everything like that. I'm sure they would do if you were going to America. Oh, well, do you remember when the Benidorm first started? That was, everybody wanted to do Benidorm because they flew you out there to Spain for a week to wow. film, possibly two weeks. And you got paid for every day. And yeah. free accommodation and free food and drink. It's a so great TV that... series. It's still on it everywhere. And you keep getting these little short reels on Facebook about Benny Dom. And it's so yeah. funny, isn't it? It's, it's politically un- incorrect, but it's dead funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a crack at learning Spanish at the minute using that uh, Duolingo app. And I oh, always I... think of the Spanish barman because everything starts with Cho, where uh, <laughs> I want to do the Cho. And I think I just sound like... Uh, 
Can't remember his name now. Oh, yeah. goodness. He's a, good, act- not Joe he's a good actor. He's like actually that. British, isn't he? Yeah. And I thought he was genuinely Spanish till I saw him interviewed. So he's- good at that acting. I mean, it got shelved, didn't it? Benny has been axed, hasn't it, a long time ago. Yeah, now. yeah. Matthias, just- that was his name, wasn't it? What was Matthias. that? Matthias. Matthias, yeah. Simon's name, yeah. The same as the wine. Yes. <laughs> Mateus, Rosé. Yeah, <laughs> anyway. So, right now, it's been great talking to you. You know what we do on, on here, on the, the podcast, on Sands? What we do is ask three questions of our guests, you see, to see how they're going to, what they come up Ooh. with and reply. So, it's nothing really tricky. And everybody starts sweating at this moment. It's really funny. It's funny for me because I know what the questions are. Ooh. We'll start off with the, the first one, and I think you'll you'll have no problem with this one. Who's been your biggest music influencer? You know, who did impress you as a child or a kid or a, as you were growing up and thought, they are just brilliant? I was late in the day coming to the Everly Brothers and I only really listened to them because I was trying to impersonate them. But I've come to love the, the cleverness of their harmonies. They're not predictable harmonies. They're really unusual. And they came from a musical family as well. Their parents used to sing. So it, it's they were very clever musicians and the harmonies are not as easy as you think. I enjoyed those. But, of course, I liked uh, Human League and OMD when I was a teenager growing up, yeah. Yeah. Was he a new romantic? Oh, well, I wasn't allowed to dye my fringe or bleach it. Uh, I tried and certainly wasn't allowed to wear any makeup. I think my dad had just got over seeing Boy George on the yeah. top of the pops. But, uh, yeah, in, in my heart I was a new romantic, yeah. Yeah, I think I think the nearest we got was wearing eyeliner. mm mm-hmm. Because yeah. Gary Newman used to have that as well. And, and I think we like to think we were Gary Newman at one stage. <laughs> he was so cool, though, wasn't he? He was, Gary yeah. Newman, what a legend. He never smiled, though. Don't break a smile. Not even on breaking no. wind, I can't smile. But, uh... <laughs> right, that's question number one. That's answered that. Now then, here's question number two. I don't know if you have any trouble with this one, but what's your favourite car or a dream car you would love to drive? I take it you're driving. I am driving, yeah. And I'd love to drive a Capri. I've always wanted Capri. to drive a Capri. I just missed the time of Capris. And then I, I got it in my head that they might be really cheap last year or the year before. And I thought, I wonder if I can pick up a cheap Capri and I'll just drive it for a year. Well, yeah. have you seen the prices of them, Nigel? Amazing. They're a legendary car like Ford Escort. You yeah. can't get them. 60 They're just grand. thousands and thousands of pounds. 60,000. I saw a, a Sierra and it was going nearly 100 grand. You know, the uh, the top-of-the-range Sierra. I can't remember what it was called now. Um, Is it Sierra Cosworth? Yeah, that was it. Cosworth, yeah. wasn't it? And like a hundred grand for a mint one of those. So hang on to your car a little bit longer because you never know. <laughs> <laughs> it could be worth something. I don't think I could get in and out of a Capri now. I think my knees were, yeah. they were quite low down, weren't they? Yeah, my sister had one. She had uh, a yellow Capri. And, Did she? Uh, yeah, somebody ran into a near premium bonds, and that oh. was that. Then she got a new Mini, and then somebody ran into that as well. So, oh. But they didn't. she didn't give up. She kept no. driving. <laughs> but, yeah, Good. The Capri Good. was a bit of a poser car, wasn't it? And she, the yellow one, I mean, I don't think a bloke would be driving a yellow one. I think it was more for a, a lady, wasn't it, really? I suppose, uh, I think he, yeah, yeah. I think he had a leather roof as well, if I'm not wrong. Oh, wow. Anyway, that's question number two, and you won't be getting one of them because there isn't any of them no. about. If you win the pools or something, or the, the pools, <laughs> the lottery, <laughs> we're going back like in time there. Hey, look at this, I've got five draws. <laughs> I know. Well, I might get a tenner. I yeah. Mean, the used to say the that. pools man's coming draws, round yeah. soon. You remember the pools man used to come round, didn't he? Collect your pools. With the picture of Viv Nicholson on the on the top of it saying spend, spend, spend. And she did. And she right, did anyway, yeah. <laughs> that's number two out of the way, Capri. Now, this one might take a little bit of sorting out, question number three. What's your favourite must-go-to food or snack? You know, it's a dead simple one. It's a dead simple <laughs> one. I love melted cheese on toast. Do you? Is that your favourite? I do. Yeah, if you want to put some onion with it or a sprinkle of chilli or any, you can just add anything to it, can't you, really? Yeah. But as long as the cheese is melted on the toast. Are you a brown bread man or are you just a, a white bread? Or what sort of bread do you like? Well, you know, I'll eat cheese on anything, to be honest, but it can't be a milk roll. It's It's got to be it's got to be a, a thick white slice for me, I think. 
Yeah, I thought you were going to say uh, a bacon sandwich. That would be my favourite. Oh, no, you see, it's probably a tie. It's difficult. Like, I do love a, a good bacon sandwich as well. Yeah. But maybe the cheese on toast just pips it for me. That's it. There's only those three questions, so don't worry. Oh, thank God for that. You can relax now. <laughs> you can let your hair go. And <laughs> yes, I know. Um, hey, it's been great chatting to you. As as per normal, um, all your fans will be listening and that, won't they? And, uh... <laughs> Tell them to look out for a series called Lazarus. I filmed that last week. I was um, I don't know what it's about. Everything was very secretive, but I was road worker next to the burst water mains, unfortunately. Right. So I was underneath the rain machine and wet through for three hours in the centre of Liverpool. But you might spot me in a white hard hat. <laughs> and it's in, in a, I don't know when it's on. Next year, probably. So what, what's the name of the, the, the show again? Called Lazarus. Lazarus. Yeah. Are they running out of um, one-word titles they can use now for TV series? You know, like, <clears throat> it's got to be like Flood, Tragic, or Lazarus, or whatever <laughs> it is. And, that, and it, you know... That's, that's the trend. Uh Trigger point. Was that on the other day? Was that? That was good. But that's two words. We got to two words now because we run out of one words. That was a good series. I enjoyed that. I, I um, heard good things about it, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you've not seen that? Not yet. It's a good one, that. So you'll be in that, Lazarus. Anything else on the way this year that you know about? Uh, possibly Waterloo Road. But I've already played a parent and a press photographer in that some years back. But uh, they're, they're, it's, it's back again now, isn't it? A whole new iteration of it. The agent has said that they're going to put me forward for more of those. It's timeless, isn't it? When you think about it, a TV show about school, you're just going to go yeah. on forever, aren't you? The kids growing up and different teachers, yeah. But they'll have they're to like... be putting it on after nine o'clock in a bit, you know, with all the effing and jeffing going on. Shenanigans that go on in school. If it was real, yeah. anyway, you know. <clears throat> anyway, it wasn't <laughs> like that when I went to school. <laughs> <laughs> we were just busy burning magnesium with Bunsen burners instead of learning how to, how to run our lives, weren't we? Yeah. Run things still went on, though, when we were kids. I mean, everybody goes on about, oh, today it's terrible. But there was awful things going on when we were kids, there really, was... weren't there? <laughs> but nobody run, knew run about them because we didn't have any social media, so nobody found out about <laughs> no, them, did they? No. It was just word of mouth down the corner shop and stuff like that, wasn't it, when you were picking That's up your right. Lines. Anyway. <laughs> what you heard. Down, uh, down the Smokers Alley. The, Smokers yeah. Alley. I got caught when I was at school. There was an alco at the school. Uh, it was a sports hall at Ansdell's. It doesn't say Ans Secondary Modern. It became the school. I was having a cigarette there, a crafty oh. fag, and um, I thought everybody's dispersed around here. Anyway, carry on. Next thing, bang on my back. <laughs> Come on, off to the headmaster. I thought, oh. And I thought everybody got caned in those days for smoking. Gosh. You got six. Yes. I stood there for ages, and one of my favourite teachers came past and said, oh, he must have had a quiet word. Said, Nigel, he's all right, Nigel. He's fine. Yeah, but he's been smoking. He don't want cane in. And, and I just got a really stern warning and got off. <laughs> oh, thank I God for that. used to do that. I used to get around the teachers a little bit. I don't know whether you tried to do that, but, you know, oh, soft spot. It's self-preservation, isn't it? <laughs> he said, how could you cane somebody with eyebrows like that? So then he wouldn't do it, you see. This is how it goes. It's been brilliant chatting to you, Ian. As always. And you, Nigel. You think your radio days are over now, yeah? Well, I think so. I think so. I really enjoyed doing that. Um, but it's gone, And it, it was a golden opportunity, and I feel like that's kind of had its time for me, really, yeah. I think radio has, generally speaking, and I think it's <clears> just <throat> not modern, is it, for a start? Things are moving and, on. And there was an interesting, like, poll done at uh, a place, I won't mention the place because it's round here on the Fowl Coast, a big working office, and they said, tell us which radio station you listen to. And you know what? Everybody chose a national radio station and they didn't choose a local radio station. So that tells it all, doesn't it, really? Oh, and you see, I'd have thought a local station would have been the thing to listen to because you can relate to what the people are talking about or mentioning, but I think you're quite right. It's, it's, it's actually doesn't work that way, does it? Anyway, stick to the TV, because that's always going to keep going, isn't it? Netflix, Doctor Who, got it all lined up for you this year. I did a Netflix Christmas film, but I don't know if I was ever shown. I was supposed to be a landlord, then I was a carol singer, then I was just man sat in the pub with a yeah. packing... Um... Yeah, just before you go, do you get a credit of your name if, you're, if you are an extra, or it's not? No, no, because there are levels of extra dumb, if that's the phrase. Right. If, if you're a featured extra... Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, featured extra, I think, is the thing. You get a credit then, but other than that, 
No, you're just uh, just in the background. Right, we'll leave your details underneath the podcast anyway. So if there's any <laughs> inspiring film directors or anything like that, they can get in touch. Get you on I the think next my show. agent leaves them in the bin, Nigel. I don't know where my details go. Well, you but never I'm know. Always hopeful. We'll put um, the carrier pigeon details or however you want to be contacted at the bottom of the yeah. podcast. <laughs> Ian, you never know. I mean, you've advertised Doctor Who for at least half an hour, so you've got a good chance now. <laughs> oh, no, I've said I'm a fan. They won't have me. Oh, no, you're not really a fan. You just you mistakenly no. thought that would be the thing to say. But it's yeah, been yeah, great. It's just, great. just an old T-shirt. Yeah, yeah it wasn't great it. having you on the podcast as well. Um, by the way, the first subscriber to Sam's Showbiz podcast was Stevie Bell. Who was it? Go, yeah. Stevie Give him a Bell. shout before you go, will you? Stevie Bell, I will. Great to hear that you're the first subscriber to the podcast. Podcast, <laughs> and you were always, uh, always. It was great to see your name when it was on the radio. Fantastic, yeah. and always uh, love your witty responses as well. Keep it going Excellent. and drive safely. Yeah, drive safely. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot, Ian. Brilliant to have you on, and we'll catch up soon as well. We'll what we'll do, we'll catch up with you in about a year. All right, or maybe less if you feel like it, <laughs> and we'll find out. You know, if you get some good news, let us know. We'll get you on another podcast and you can explain more about it. Oh, I would love to, Nigel. It's been great to talk to you again. Okay, cheers, Ian. Thanks very much. See you. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. If you loved what you heard, make sure to hit subscribe on this podcast channel to never miss an episode. Stay connected and become part of the Sand Showbiz family by following us on our social media platforms. See you next time.